Hi, how's it going? This is resident of Colorado for YouTube. I'm here to get I'm here to review. Yeah, review. I'm going crazy. I'm here to talk to Dark Shadows finally again. Oh god. I'm here to talk about how well really Dark Shadows did with a lack of character build. And man, there are some characters who had not great build up that had really, really awesome uh A debuts and B had large impacts on the series in general. Um obviously I'm gonna start with Angelique. <laughs> um so Angelique, who was played by actress Laura, the late lovely Laura Parker, as we all love and know, um, her character Angelique had very little to no build, and I do find, you know, even with Dark Shadows today, you know, as many times as I've watched it, it still amazes me how this character had absolutely no build. I mean. Just none. <laughs> and you could say, well, sh there was that one moment in the Muslim. Yeah, but that's not a lot. I mean, what does that really tell you? <laughs> not much. Um, it doesn't tell you who it is. It doesn't give you a name. You just know it's a wicked woman. Woman. Um, which, I mean, is interesting. Remember, there's that episode. And I will leave a link to episodes in the description box. So, look for those. Um, they'll be, they'll definitely be there for you guys to check out. And yes, I will be getting them from Tubi. <laughs> so, there's an episode of Dark Shadows where Julie, it's before they go back to, they go to 1795, before they send Victoria back to 1795 due to seance. And one of the best things here is she's in the mausoleum. She hears a woman crying. And then she hears a wook, a wicked woman laughing. And I, if memory serves me, I think the tombs, the graves, or the tombstones on the wall are bleeding. At least one of them is. I could be misremembering that. If I am, I apologize. I remember blood somewhere, <laughs> dark shadows. Um, and that laugh, the most important thing is the laugh, because that's telling you that, hey, a wicked woman is behind some some things here. We don't know her name. We don't know who she is. And then there's Angelique's debut, which I'm definitely going to leave a link to here, too. And what a debut. The writers, Dan Curtis, I mean, they def... Look, you'll often hear... The writers say they didn't know where they were taking Barnabas, which I got, I agree with. They didn't, but here's here's Angelique. The, I would love to know at what point did they decide? Okay, we need a witch. We need that, like, because you've heard. I'm sure you guys have all heard Laura Parker give interviews where she has said that. You know, when she auditioned for the role, it was Jonathan Frid who told her um, that Angel, that, hey, she's a witch. Did you know she's a witch? She's a witch. You know, he told her this. And now, could it have been the writers, hey, Jonathan, please, you know, maybe they've just forgot, and, which is possible. I don't know. Maybe the writers just said, hey, we forgot to tell Laura she, the character's a witch. Can you remind her? You know, and he, Maybe he said, yeah, sure, no problem. Because, I mean, you've always heard how nice Jonathan Frid was with his castmates and concerned, how concerned for him he was. So I could definitely see him, do, or just maybe he just took the task himself as soon, you know, knowing that, you know. I'm sure they, I'm sure there was communication between the writers and Jonathan and Dan and Jonathan where somebody said, hey, Jonathan, man, this character's a witch. Please let Laura know, you know, she, this, you know, somebody told somebody something is what I'm trying to say in a roundabout way. Um, but definitely Jonathan Frid did tell Laura Parker, hey, she's a witch. And she goes, oh, 
And that's what that there caused Laura Parker to really play the part. Not just amazingly, not just the way it was written, not just as Jonathan Frid told her, but man, she sold her ass off. Here's a character coming in with absolutely zero build. And I'm going to get to other characters here too. But man, does Laura Parker get that character over in one episode. Completely over. You get, man, this character is either going to get, Barn get Barnabas to marry her or collapse going in that direction by hook or by crook. <laughs> um, that's, that's, it seems like before The Prisoner, that was the theme for Dark Shadows too. At times by hook or by crook for the villains because they will they will trip you up for sure here um one of my favorites lack of character build um i love angelique don't get me wrong is dr eric lane there is no build to dr eric lane at all barnabas just get barnabas and victoria are in a crash vicky wrecks the car <laughs> <laughs> you know who's you know who's passenger, don't you? Barnabas. <laughs> oh God, you can't take Barnabas anywhere, man. <laughs> he's just he's in the passenger side of the car. Um, <laughs> the visual of this is is funny, I promise you, because I keep vision Vicky and Barnabas in the car, but. Vicky wrecks the car, and her and Barnabas end up in a hospital. You know, as phone calls are made to Collinwood, and Julia finds out that Barnabas is in a hospital, Vicky's in the hospital. You meet a man coming into Barnabas' room, and this is Dr. Eric Lane. There's absolutely no build to this character at all. I mean, there's never a mention of a Dr. Eric Lane, Dark Shadows, prior to this. And it's one of the best characters, and most one of the most important, too, in the creation of A. Adam, helping Barnabas cure his affliction of vampirism. Um, it's a big-time character. And, you know, man, what a job. He does, and he plays a mad scientist. The actor who did this plays a mad scientist so well it is criminally underrated i mean he pulls a gun on barnabas and threatens to shoot him and it's like dude this this is your opportunity and barnabas is like you won't shoot me oh won't i <laughs> like like don't push that don't push that barnabas don't push that one i mean he does such a great job and uh you know because he convinces Barnabas, hey, I can help you, I can cure you. And at first, he's using in, uh, these injections. And then, they, they're they starting to not work, you know. And he goes, hey, I have this other plan, here it is. Your face will be on this, your face and stuff. Now, the things, some things about him changed. Because initially, it was supposed to be Barnabas's, it was supposed to be Barnabas's full life force that went into Adam, and Adam didn't have a face yet, and Adam, Dr. L Dr. Lindsay could have any face he wanted, he goes, I want Jeff Clark's, <laughs> and then he, Barnabas realized, you know what, if I do this, I'm no better than Angelique herself, it, it's a defining moment, you know, as my buddy Patrick McCray has pointed out to me, and he's right, it is, it's that, also, the Between the Shadows ladies, I do believe Christine and Kara pointed this out, too. So, there'll be some links in the description box. Many, many links. Uh, YouTube channels and book links first. Then then episodes, I promise. I got a lot to get to here um, with this video a bit. So, Barnabas says, no, I'm, I'm not going to do that. And they find another face. And obviously, the... You know, you have Robert Rodan who's going to play Adam. And only Barnabas's vampiric side goes into Adam. Um, Adam's very strong. He's very tall. Robert Rodan was a tall dude. Um, and again, just 
You see, because you're at least getting an introduction to that character that's on the table because you're being shown and it's being mentioned. Dr. Eric Lane does not get that. Angelique doesn't get that. But they get the... the people involved get those characters over amazingly. Um, another one, another really, really huge one, is Nicholas Blair has has very little mention. And really, his mention is so sneaky, you could miss it. I gotta admit, this is one that I did not catch when I, the first time I watched DS until I rewatched it years later. I'm thinking, Blair, Blair. Because the last time you hear the name Blair is with um, Burke Devlin. But... So Cassandra slash Angelique goes to visit Dr. Eric Lane. She makes up a medical excuse uh, to him. Oh, I'm Cassandra. And she... Instead, of, and now keep in mind, this character is married to Roger. She's Cassandra Collins by marriage. But she doesn't introduce herself as that. She introduces herself as Cassandra Blair. And I'm thinking, Blair? Blair? Guy Bardella was working with Blair? But no, that's not the case. Um, and it, so that's, that's Dark Shadow's little mention or little nod to hey there's a character with the last name Blair out there it's not just Cassandra and when Nicholas shows up there's a knock at the door here's this man standing there and he introduces himself as Nicholas Blair Cassandra's brother <laughs> it's like oh oh shit <laughs> like you gotta realize shit is about to hit the fan <laughs> literally in DS, because you have a warlock <laughs> getting ready to cause all sorts of craziness, and he does. H again, his mention, his character buildup is very minimal, just like Angelique's, but Humbert Allen Alstrado was a terrific actor, and he definitely sold that character a lot. I love his interactions with Vicky. Oh, am I a warlock? Like... <laughs> That's really good. Um, and a lot of his interactions with Adam, Robert, him and Robert Rodin, at Humbert Allen Australia and Robert Rodin were gold together. I mean, they were very... You, you have... Basically, I mean, I'm not calling him, I'm not calling the character the devil he wasn't, but in a sense, you have a character who's devilish advising somebody who was just brought into the world of the world not too terribly long ago and they're conflicted with how they should feel and be um and it's really an, again it's a testament to those not just the writers but the actors involved it really really well done um I mean, Aristide, you could say Aristide has no build, and then he just shows up at the lawyer's house in 1897, asking for the hand of Potofe, wanting a hand, and he gets, guess what, he gets it. Uh -huh. Angela gets it back, though. Um, no, but I would say Potofe has a great build-up, actually, because how many times do they mention... It's the hand of Count Potofi. It's enough times that it lets you know this character's on the way. Now, I will say, when you're watching DS for the first time, you don't know Victor Ben Givens is Count Potofi if you're watching DS for the first time. That you don't know if you're watching it for the first time. But if you watch DS before, you know. <laughs> so, I, I love how Dark Shadows really did a great job of getting its characters over. It's a testament to, yes, the actors and the writing team working really, really well. And I love the fact, too, with these characters that I mentioned on here, they're all really, really interesting characters. I mean, look, Angelique 
Dr. Eric Lang, Nicholas, you know, Nicholas Blair, um, Aristide. What interesting, interesting characters. Um, no, Magda had Magda had a build. Magda had a build. I want to be clear about that. Now her husband didn't have much of a build. It didn't have a build, but Magda did. Magda had enough of a build. Um, let me see. I'm trying to think. Quentin gets mentioned a lot before you actually see the ghost. So um, I'm trying to think of other. I mean, you could get into the Leviathan for sure. There are definitely characters who weren't mentioned um, before they showed up. Like, so that's another. You know, you didn't build the character, but you had the character just appear, and they were here in the world of DS, and they were amazing. Um, they were very interesting. And Dark, it goes to show you, though Dark Shadows had success with Barnabas, they never stopped taking risks, whether it's creating a character with absolutely no build, because they did it multiple times, the writers and production crew, and they had actors and actresses who worked and sold their asses off. Bravo. Bravo. Really great job by everybody involved. Um, the, I don't know what to call this video. Um, I'll try to think of a title. I don't, I did not have a title for this video when I was thinking about it in my head. I'll try to come up with one. Um, I think I'll call it Dark Shadows, characters who got over despite a lack of build. I think that's a great, it's a long title, but it fits what I'm talking about. And just because a character has a lack of build, doesn't mean you can't get them over. So, it's all in the actual writing of the character, a lot of the times not just the build. Sure, sometimes you get both, and that's fantastic, but there's going to be times, there's maybe going to be times that you don't, but it doesn't mean you can't get that character across. You just got to have faith in the actor or actress playing the character and write, write the character really well. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day. Take care.